Hi, Javon Harley here with the Traveling Culturati, and I'm here at the Japanese Information Center for a little bit of sake tasting. This is the Culture Report. So here at the Japanese Information Center and our foundation for sake tasting, we have so many wonderful guests. And one of the things you want to know is how do you pair food with sake? And I am here with... Hi, uh, my name is Naoyuki Yanagihara. Naoyuki, is it okay if I just call you Naoyuki? Sure, okay. okay, it would be easy for me. Thank you so much. <laughs> and I understand you run a cooking school. Yes. So I run, cook, I run cooking school and I'm vice president of Kinsaru Yanagihara School of Traditional Japanese Cooking. So we, te we teach the traditional Japanese cooking, yes. And is that here in Chicago? No, it's in Tokyo, Akasaka, the center of Tokyo. Ah, yes. the mother place. <laughs> yes, yes. I love, love, love Tokyo. So, so how do we pair Japanese cuisine or any cuisine for that sake with sake? What are those pairing rules? Actually, sake is very flexible, so uh, Japanese sake is not so strong taste, not so strong flavor. So uh, I think it very fits uh, everything. Yeah, so meat and fish and uh, vegetable, uh, you can eat with the sake. So also the sake is, uh, you can enjoy only sake as well. And uh, for example, daiginjo. Uh, the aginjo is a uh, really shaped uh, rice, the sake. That's a very flavorful and also they have a very clear taste. So I recommend you that if you want to try the Japanese sake the first time, is a daiginjo is uh, recommend. Daiginjo. Daiginjo. And so that's one that you would taste just on its own and it's a nice starter. Sake. Yes, also you can you, you can use for starter, but also you can use uh, after dinner, the, like dessert wine. Also, daiginjo is sometimes really sweet, so you can uh, enjoy after dinner, like a dessert wine as well. Well, great. Thank you so much, because I think that's very helpful when you're talking about food pairings. We all know about wines, but not so much about sakes. So it's, it's helpful to know to at least look for something and the different flavor profiles that you can perfect, that you can, uh, that you can pair with just about any type of cuisine. Yes. Any type of cuisine, yes. It's well, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Okay, thank you very much. I am here at the Japanese Information Center in Chicago for a bit of sake tasting and look who I ran into. It's the Hungry Hound, Steve Dolinsky. How are you today? I'm great. I'm getting ready for some sake tasting. I'm kind of excited about that. I love sake. Well, I won't keep you too long because it is delicious and I saw you heading that way. Uh, so, have you been to Japan? I've been three times, actually. I've been to Tokyo and Kyoto, but also Sendai up in the north and Osaka, which is actually not that far from Kyoto as people think it is. I love Osaka, and I love the food culture in Osaka, especially the street food culture. It's very much a street food culture. There is the takoyaki, the little savory balls with a little piece of octopus inside, the okonomiyaki, which are those savory pancakes. Of course, both of those are made with dashi, which is the building block of Japanese cuisine, but it is so much about like the boisterousness, the, the fun, the energy, you know, eating the kaiten sushi or the conveyor belt sushi was created in Osaka. Kapo style dining where you sit at a counter and face the chef and have an interaction. I just, everybody in Osaka talks about eating all the time. Yes, and certainly when you're in Osaka, you want to look down the street to see the big octopus on the outside for some takoyaki. Yeah, well, there's a lot of those takoyaki vendors on that street, Dotonbori Street. Yes. And they're all, you know, the slingers, they're called, and they're making those takoyaki in those little half moon shaped griddles. That is just so much fun. And then, of course, they're topping it with uh, the Kewpie mayo and the okonomiyaki sauce and all the bonito flakes and shake them nori. It's just, it's like a umami bomb in your mouth. Well, we're here to taste some sake tonight. Do you have any favorites? Oh my gosh. Um, I don't, I, t I tend to like styles as opposed to specific names. I like the Junmai Ginjo, which is kind of like the middle one. The Daiginjo is the most polished grain. Junmai is the least polished. I like the middle one, the Junmai Ginjo. 
Um, so I tend to just ask for that typically. But it, one of the things that came up in this panel was, you know, when you're promoting something like um, a spirit, if you're doing like a Suntory whiskey and you're at a bar in Tokyo, when they serve you the glass of whatever you're drinking, they'll put the bottle on the table as well. So you can make a, an association, a connection to that bottle and that label. But with sake, it's difficult because it's a lot of Japanese writing and it's a pretty picture of some flowers or some lilies and that's about it. It's hard to remember. So I think one of the things I got out of this was the sake manufacturer, the distributor, really has to print differently in an English in America to get people to remember specific brands because I honestly just don't remember that many brands. I would have to agree with you and like you I just describe what I like as far as flavors are concerned and then they will make a nice recommendation for you but not everyone is adventurous so I, I do see your point as far as at least that translation in English that'll make people feel a little bit more comfortable in ordering here in the United States. I think generally people can ask and they should be able to ask I like light or crisp or fruity or floral and then the servers will hopefully have a recommendation for them if they're trained well. The other thing that they were talking about on the panel was, you know, training the staff. It's very important. They have to be able to understand what they're selling. And it's a lot of it's hand selling to, to guests. Well, Steve, thank you so much for stopping by and giving me a little bit of time. And I'm going to release you so that you can go ahead and taste some sake. My pleasure. Thanks for asking. Arigato gozaimasu. Arigato gozaimasu. Okay, so we're going to go taste some sake because afterwards I don't know how I'm going to be able to communicate with you, but I'm having such a blast here at the Japanese Information Center and on this week's Culture Report.